as we enter the holiday season, it's a time for giving. And a lot of people give money to charities, but knowing how to give the money to charity in the smartest fashion can save tax dollars. And that's going to be our topic on today's episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. Hi, Bridget Sullivan Lamel, and I've got a fee-only planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And before we start uh, talking about tips on donating, John, uh, let's have people subscribe. So that helps us with YouTube and helps us get our word out. Thank you if you're already subscribed. Okay, so John, let's talk about our four main tips for how the regular person, not multi-billionaire, can uh, give money more effectively so that they can, in, in effect, give more money away. Our first yeah. tip is that in 2021, there's a, even if you don't itemize, which I would say 90% of the people don't itemize on their taxes anymore, you can still deduct $300 if you're single or $600 if you're married finally jointly uh, on your taxes if you give away those amounts of money. And that is if you give away those amounts of money in cash, doesn't count if you're giving a money or if you give donating stuff for 2021. That's right. And, and that's what we're kind of talking about today is right is giving cash, giving money, not clothes and furniture right. and things. And it used to be before a couple of tax law changes recently that when you gave money to charity, sort of, you know, most people could deduct it on their taxes. Now, as you said, most people can't deduct it except for that three to six hundred dollars. Um, on that level. So the first thing the easiest, right? You write a check. That's what most people do is write a check. So keep track of those records, even if you're not itemizing, because you can take a deduction for that. But then there's some other ways that people can give the same amount to charity and have a little more bang for the buck. And one of them is if you have an investment, not in an IRA, but in a brokerage account and a regular taxable investment, and that investment has gone up, you bought a mutual fund for $1,000, and now it's worth $10,000. If you give that mutual fund or that investment to charity, you, you don't have to pay any taxes on the, on the gains in it, where normally you have to pay taxes on gains. You give it to the charity, they sell it, and because they're a nonprofit and a tax-free organization, they don't have to pay any gains on it, and so you avoid paying those, those taxes on gains. So one of the things is, hey, if I'm going to give money to a charity, do I have any investments that I'd otherwise have to pay taxes on? If I can look to give that money to charity, that can be uh, that can save a significant amount in taxes, more for the charity, as you said, Bridget, and a bigger tax deduction for me. And you need to use charities for this that are established enough. So if your local theater company might not have it set up so that they're able to accept that kind of donation, but any kind of middle or uh, large charity will. So any kind of church should be able to accept this kind of donation, even if it's a pretty small church. Uh, any large uh, charity will love this, but a small startup charity that is giving to bunnies, you know, the bunny charity might not. I don't know. Right. You have, have so you have to ask, right? Yeah. Ask, hey, I'd like to give some, I've got some stock. Would you or some mutual funds? Would you be, would I be able to donate that to you? And just by asking that question, you can save yourself some money and you could save the charity some money as well. Right. And if yeah. they don't know, then just move on. It's okay. That's uh, right. They probably don't do it. Um, but it's uh, common and uh, charities that accept these donations will encourage it. So it's right. uh, not a problem and it's not weird to ask. No, absolutely not. One thing, there's one other strategy that people that a certain group of people can take advantage of, and you don't have to ask the charity for, for any benefits. And that's if you're over 70 and a half, you can give money from your IRAs directly to charities and it doesn't count as taxable as, as a withdrawal for you. And so where that can be really helpful is that, listen, when you put money into your IRA, it went in and you took a tax deduction, so that money has never been taxed, right? It grows, there's no taxes. And I said, listen, if I'm going to spend that, I'm going to have to pay taxes That's on that. But if I give it to the charity, there's no taxes on the other end. So that's money that has literally never been taxed. All, all money that has never been taxed that goes to the charity, it's the equivalent of taking a deduction for it. And so again, without itemizing or having, you know, more complicated things, giving money from your IRA to charity, that can be a great way to save some tax dollars and put more money in the charity's pocket as well. 
And there's two other tips that I would suggest with that. One is that you need to get a checkbook from your IRA account. And most IRAs that I've seen lately uh, do allow you to get a checkbook because the check has to be written directly from your IRA account to the charity. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that these donations count as required minimum distributions if you're over 72. So if you're over 72 and you give some money to a charity through your uh, uh, through writing a check out of the IRA, then that counts as part of your required minimum distribution. So you can take less in your required minimum distribution if you don't need to take uh, the total amount, like if, if from for your lifestyle. Yep, that's great. And then the, the, the last the last thing that I wanted to make sure we talk about today is even if you don't fit any of those other categories and you're just going to write a check to the charity, you might look and say, listen, if I always give $1,000 to this charity every year, maybe I'll give five years worth and group my deductions into one year so that I can do take advantage of that itemizing in a year. And it takes a little bit more math to look at that, but you might look at, at grouping your deductions, grouping your donations to charity into one year. And and, uh, and that can be an effective way for people that on a consistent basis give to their church or specific charities. Um, and, it, and again, if you're going to give the same amount over, over a period of time, but if you can take a little higher deduction for it, that can be really effective. So we're really happy to be able to offer this like four easy uh, doable ways that you can give more money to charity be, charities effectively. There are more advanced ways too. We'll perhaps we'll talk about this too. But these are great for just the regular person uh, to be tax smart and give away as much as possible. And the, the biggest the biggest if there's one we, we're big on action items here. If there's one action item, sort of the big tip is if you're going to give money to charity this year. Just think about, is there a way that I could give money to them and have a little little bigger bang for my buck than just writing a check? And those things that we walk through today, those are sort of a checklist of, oh, do I have investments that have gone up? Geez, if I'm over 70 and a half, maybe I should look at that. Maybe if I'm not over 70 and a half, I should talk to my parents about doing that. Would it make sense for me to group my deductions and do a bunch in one year, like sort of a checklist thing? And that can literally save hundreds of dollars in taxes by doing the things you're going to do anyway, but just being a little more tax smart with those. So I think it's probably a great place to wrap things up here. Yeah, let's wrap it up. So we're both members of ACP or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. You can find out more about ACP at acplanners.org. And if you like the way that Jed and I talk about the things, uh, there's planners all over the country. It's a non-for-profit group. We share the same values and we generally think about things the same way. That's great. And remember to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, Bridget. Thanks.